Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is May 3rd of 2019. It's uh, about 1 p.m. And I'm running Windows 10 using Manicam to record the desktop. Um, down the lower right-hand corner, you can see I'm using Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview. And this is a evaluation build 18890. Seems to be working okay. Also, I'm using uh, internet. What are they? Let's see. What do they? What do they call their browser? Uh, Edge. Yeah. And it's working okay. It's been working okay for me. And the new one here with the chromium that they're everything it's those, everything is working good so maybe from now on uh, at, a, at a certain point when you install windows 10 or whatever you're doing you you won't just have to use their edge to go and download chrome you can just go ahead and use their edge browser or whatever whatever they decide to call it um, May notice it's kind of quiet here. My family, my ex-wife, and my grown son are at Walmart and picking up groceries. Usually, it may, well, I'm not sure how, if you hear, of course, I usually close the door then when, but my ex-wife, uh, by the way, I'm going to be talking about hearing loss in a little bit in this video. Uh, anyway, my ex-wife has the television set going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it is loud. Of course, on the TV, she also watches, uh, you know, YouTube videos and does things like that. But And then uh, she has it going 24 hours a day, seven days a week. She'll fall asleep with the remote control. She'll wake up, you know, and she'll... Uh, and, Two, she'll be watching a movie or something and she'll fall asleep and the, the thing will run and she'll wake up at some point and then she'll rewind it and go back to, you know, wherever she went, fell asleep or whatever and it'll go again. So I'll go into the area in there and she has her bedroom right in the dining room area and so it's right next to the kitchen and... Uh, I'll go in there and I'll see some terrible movie. I, I only like certain kinds of movies. Maybe all of us are that way. But I mean, I really just like certain kinds of movies. And she has these other, and not just movies, but crappy shows, 600 pound people having their operations and that kind of stuff. And I hate that. And I hate reality TV. And I hate the uh, shows where they audition people, you know. The voice. Well, the voice. I don't think she watches too much, but I just hate all the crap. But it's not just. <laughs> yeah, I'm not subjected to it once, but because she falls asleep and rewinds, it's going. And I see the same. I go in there to get uh, food and snacks and that kind of stuff, and I'm subjected to it. But anyways, it's kind of noisy a lot of the time. Now my grown son, his bedroom where he has his computers and stuff right there he doesn't have them up because, but uh, but anyway uh, so I'm thinking this well you'll see this is going to be a test of it see if it what I have a uh, oh here it is the Panasonic G7 and uh, you know, I mean it's but it's not brand new. Well, it's brand new, but I haven't, I mean, I haven't used it. Uh, I don't forget when I got it, six months ago, a year ago, less than I think in a year. Really nice camera. I really wanted it. Panasonic G7. And I really haven't been, uh, well, and it has too. I could use a better, it, it comes with this, I forget what, 50 millimeter, whatever, which is basically perfect for, video blogging 
but I could, uh, but I don't want to spend the money for, you know, but I need another lens if I'm for other purposes. But anyway, I really haven't been using the, uh, the camera. You'll see some videos on here, but not very many where I use this, very few. It's like a virgin camera that hasn't been used. So I want to start using it. So what I think about doing is uh, doing my videos the way I normally do like this. So you have, I have screens over here where you can, where I can pop things up, which I'm not doing right now really well. It's just there. But I'll, you know, bring things up that I'm talking about or whatever. Then over here you'll have, you know, the... They're going to be home in a little bit, D.D. They'll, they'll be home in about 15 minutes, D.D. Darlene and Jimmy will be here in a little bit. So, uh... I'm going to continue to do this because I like this format. I mean, you can see me, but I'm not filling a screen up, thank God. And I have this where I can pop up when I'm talking about something. Or you actually go do a search if I, I'm talking about something. We can say, hey, you know, and I can show you some things. And then I think at the, towards the end, let's call it a G7 moment. Ever We'll call it a G7 moment. At the end of every video, maybe, I'll go to my G7 camera. And unfortunately, you're going to have me full screen and talk about whatever I'm going to talk about. Um, and I just made, and by the way, in a little bit, I'm going to switch to that. Actually, I'm going, I've already made, I'm going to put them in the video editor and put them together and hope that the audio is, uh, I'm not really good at audio. I've done very little with it. So I hope, I hope the audio is, or if not, I'll have to try to figure out how to make sure the audio is. I don't want you having great audio here. And then when it goes to the G7 moment, uh, having to crank up your audio, you know. Um, but so I'm going to be going to it here in a little bit. Um, but... This camera must time out after 30 minutes. I forget how long I talked. I don't know. But all of a sudden I was talking away about hearing loss and other subjects. I think mainly about hearing loss. And then I noticed it wasn't recording. The battery didn't go out. It was to stop recording. And I think that maybe... Uh, I'm not sure. I have this red button I need to look up. I've forgotten. I think if I push the red button, maybe it records without stopping after 30 minutes. Or maybe there's a setting where I can tell it to keep recording. It seems to me that when I use this, when I first started out using this camera and I hit the red record button, what it did was it went to the settings, it had something to do with settings because when I have this set on like video mode on the dial here at the top, you know, and I press the shutter button, then it's using the video mode settings. I think when I hit the red record button, I have two other Panasonic cameras and I think one or both of them have the red button on there. When you hit that, it just does, it records the video. But with this one, I think when you hit the red button, it changes the settings to something else because I was trying to do some recording with it and I got the settings just all right. And then I, if I pressed the, just the shutter button, fine. But if I thought, well, I'll hit the movie button with the red one, you know, I hit that and it changed, it was too dark or whatever the, uh, so I need to look into that and figure that out. But 
And oh, and it, so here the problem is going to be in just a few seconds, I'm going to go to my G7 moment. And I think mainly I'm talking about hearing loss. But you're going to all of a sudden, I'm after maybe 30, I'm sure 30 minutes or something of me blabbering about everything and not being, and I can't remember now even what I talked about. It's just going to abruptly end. So I'm not going to come back with a sec. Maybe I will. No, I'm not. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, be prepared for it. So thank you very much for watching. Don't touch the mouse. A G7 moment is coming. Okay. Let's call this a G7 moment. Oops. Let me turn the... So I can see where I am. There I am. Using the Panasonic G7. Oh, let's see, I just checked Windows update. It's installing an, the NVIDIA driver. Okay, it says it's 100%. Okay, I guess I don't have to reboot. I always worry about those NVIDIA drivers. I mean, my <coughs> desktop computer is working good. But uh, sometimes you get these notices for a NVIDIA driver and sometimes things don't go well. I think what I'm going to do is, well I may change my mind, but I think what I may do is make the sort of videos I've been making. So I'll be using the desktop computer and split screen sort of, well no, just a video insert up there using my uh, USB Logitech camera and then perhaps at the end of the video doing this type of stuff that I've been doing go to what we may call a, a G7 moment where I'm using my Panasonic G7 camera and so you have a full screen living color Problem is, I'll have to make sure that, and then I have to splice these together, and I'll have to make sure I get the equal volume setting. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe that's what I'll do. I I come up with uh, ideas or plans, and then I don't, you know, make a video a day, which I don't do. Uh, do different, come up with different ideas and like live stream every day, whatever, and then I just don't follow through with them for one reason or another. Uh, you may notice that it is sort of quiet here. Of course with my hearing problem, I hear noise all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. My particular notice, or notice, noise, sounds to me like constant crickets. So, other people have other problems. The problem actually is not with the hearing. Well, it's something inside the brain. Mm -hmm. And scientists and doctors have found no cure for it. And it's something that, I'm not sure I can look it up, but why, you can look it up. It's uh, something that millions and millions of people deal with. Uh, some, better than other, some better than others. You'll see on the internet, uh, things, you know, People have, okay, here's what you know. You know, nothing really works. So, it would be nice not to have, not to be hearing crickets 
your entire life or whatever the, your particular whatever it sounds like to you but on top of that I do have hearing loss and I've had that since I don't know I was second or third grade when I was a kid um, in both ears. Uh, it's not that people have to talk to me louder. That's not the problem. The problem is the tones, the range, and it's different in each ear which makes things more complicated and worse. So. I've always been interested in uh, high-tech stuff. I, you know, I had, you know, the early watches and stuff like that, and with the alarms, and had the little one that took a little like looked like it was gold, but was you know, pen that came in, and you could there was a calculator on it, you could do stuff, and I had the ones to measure your. Uh, heart rate and all that type of stuff, always into that kind of stuff. The problem is with those watches, the tone that it put out for an alarm or something like that, totally not in my hearing range. So I'd be someplace and people would be looking around or whatever and then, you know, they'd say, is that your watch or something? And then I, I, I can see it maybe flashing or something, oh, okay. Because I positively could not hear it. Especially I'd be on an elevator or something and the thing would be going off and I guess it'd be loud in the other, I wouldn't hear a sound. Uh, one hospital I worked at on the midnight shift, I worked there all together 11 years and during the winter time for the first few years the boiler would go out. If the boiler went out, no heat, uh, no hot water, all types of stuff. And there was no maintenance man at night, so the maintenance department put in a alarm down by outside the door of the plan operations department. And half the hospital away, I'd be down in the emergency room, and occasionally, you know, the ER doctor would be looking around, the ER nurses would be, you know. Then of course it got up eventually where they knew, hey Jim, you know. So, but anyway, they'd say, you know, like the doctor would say. Jim, what's that? What's that sound? Uh, what sound? Sounds like an alarm. I said, "Oh, I'll go check." And I'd go down. I'd actually walk down, and I would have to get almost to the plan operations door before I would hear that alarm. And uh, to the problem with the hearing loss is. The brain it rewires itself. The brain is really fantastic, you know. But this is not fantastically good. This is fa well, maybe it is. I don't know. But the brain rewires itself. That's why I understand if you get hearing aids, you know, you get a hearing aid or whatever, get hearing aids. Uh, the brain has to then rewire itself back a different way. So that takes a little bit. And uh, so with my hearing loss, the problem is my brain receives, like, like you, if you don't have a hearing, if you don't have hearing loss, or if maybe you just have hearing loss, but it's the same in both ears or something, I don't, you know, uh, let's say you don't have hearing loss and you're sitting here at the desk and you have maybe some something on your monitor here, maybe you're watching a Netflix video and you got the, you know, the volume down and uh, maybe there's something, they're cutting the grass outside or something and somebody comes to the door and says something to you. If you don't have hearing loss, you know, your brain tunes in on that and you hear what the person is saying. If uh, somebody were talking to you also, 
and pops up on your screen a uh, weather warning or something rather and you'd see you know and you might not hear what this person was saying because you're you know, this is a warning you know amber alert or tornado warning or whatever it is uh, my problem and other people that have this this type of a problem is if I have this going and there's even if it's just but say let's okay this is going and somebody's cutting the grass outside and you come up and it's you know and I hear all of this same strength and that way I can't make you know can't make it you know can't make it out when I was working uh, in Miami, Florida for about a year I worked at a security at a shopping mall and most of the we live near an air base uh, most of the Other people I worked with spoke Spanish, which I did not speak Spanish. Um, and also, a lot of them I didn't realize at the time, a lot of them who spoke Spanish uh, didn't understand as much, as, you know, and also when it came to, uh, say, writing a report or whatever, in, you know, in English or whatever, they had more. So there was several of them that would have me either check their report or you know ask me what I thought they should but uh, so on that shift the supervisor liked to have me in dispatch sometimes because the uh, some of them that spoke Spanish didn't had some kind of problem with you know, with English. Well, I tried to explain, well, after the first, you know, time or two put in dispatch, tried to explain to supervisor, supervisor just could not comprehend it, that that was just a terrible position for me to be in. <clears throat> because there was the telephone that would be ringing, and people, and there were alarms, there were, uh, well, there were alarms, there were also intercoms located all through the parking garage that people could press the button and say, how do I get to such and such or where, you know, whatever they push the button for. You know, I mean, if there was a problem, you know, they'd push the button. So you had the telephone, you had the alarm system, you had the intercoms that would be going off. The supervisor might be sitting over there talking to another security officer. There was a was there a scanner going. There was just all sorts of all sorts of stuff, and those things were all coming to. And the phone would ring, or the let's take the phone. The phone would ring. I would pick up the phone, you know. And I forget how he wanted me. To, uh, security and safety or whatever, what, what, I wasn't safety, we didn't do safety, you know, what we did, so I don't know. Anyway, I would answer the phone. So the person is talking to me. Now you are a person who don't have that hearing problem. All this other noise is going on, but the your phone is up to your ear, and you hear what is going on. I had the phone up to my ear, the person is telling me what the thing. I can't hear them. I mean, because I'm hearing everything else. I'm hearing the supervisor over there talking to somebody people pushing carts up and down the hall, monitor going, I could not, I couldn't hear them. And uh, tried to explain that to the supervisor. Uh, you know, I really should not be in dispatch because, but he just, he really just couldn't understand it and comprehend it. It's a real pain. <clears throat> uh, I had that you know, problem, my hearing problem since I was in grade school. My parents, I remember at least two years of school, uh, 
kind of surprising because it was a Catholic school. We didn't have resources or anything, but so I guess they had somebody come in and a class would go in, into the library and they put the headphones on. We put the headphones on and then they, we had some kind of a, you know, in front of us. And uh, so, you know, they turn the knob or whatever and you write, I don't know how they knew, you know, but you put down or you know, mark something, you know. So everybody is marking, you know, like when you hear the tone, mark or whatever, something like that. Everybody's marking. And I didn't hear anything. And then they go to the next one, you know, if you hear something, marks, you know, mark something or whatever. I don't know if it was a first or second year, maybe it was a second year, but remember there was a girl sitting next to me and this is the only time in my life you know I went to grade school and high school and uh, went to a couple of different uh, I took other went to real estate school went to we went to two community colleges or whatever never got a degree but I took courses and uh, I never ever cheated in my life just never did it. What's the point in cheating it, you know? But I think it might have been the second year that I was doing the hearing test and kids are ready, so I'm looking, I'm trying to copy off the girl that's next to me. And she was like took her paper take her paper and she's covering it up or whatever and I was I was thinking, this is a hearing test, why are you you know? But anyway the school sent home a thing each year that showed how bad the hearing was in both ears, but graphically and all that kind of stuff. Gave my parents, my parents never did anything. But I don't blame my parents because I grew up, immediately got, you know, worked all my entire, my entire life, always had health insurance. Um, I never had it checked. I mean, I never had it looked into. Now, one time I did, you know, go to my, uh, years and years later, my primary health care doctor, whatever, and I, <clears throat> I said, you know, I have a hearing loss of medicine. And he said, okay, well, we'll write our referral for you, and we'll tell you when you can go to, you know, to the, and everything, and that's fine. So the, my doctor, you know, called and said, okay, you're, we made out the referral and everything, and the appointment for you with the hearing doctor is such and such. I, I went to the uh, audio, what would it be, audiology? I don't know. Anyway, hearing doctor. And they had a fancy place, you know, a booth, uh, you know, like all kinds of stuff, a lot of equipment. I go there, I go there and they said, uh, well, Mr. Howard, we don't have a referral for you. So, I said, well, you know, my, uh, Dr. Harlow's office, they're the ones who said they would make the referral, they're the ones who said they sent the referral, and they're the ones who set the appointment up with you, and they called me and told me my appointment, and so they said, well, we don't have it, so you'll have to, you'd have to pay, you'll have to pay for it. And I said, what does it cost? I forget what the amount was, but it was a staggering amount of money, I mean, you know. I forget if it was thousand dollars or whatever, and I said, well, "I'll get a referral." Well, I never, I never got a referral, so I never had it, uh, never had it taken care of. I should have. It's, if you have hearing loss, you know. Now, when I was a kid, about the same time, I, I think I remember telling this story, but uh, to you guys before, if you happen to see it was all the videos you know, second, third grade, something like that, out with my friends walking through the neighborhood and we're looking for some street or something, you know, we're walking and the guys say, uh, oh, okay, that's Adams up there. And I was like, how do you know? Look, it's on the street sign. I said, you can see the street sign? Yeah. And the other guys, yeah, we can see the street sign. So. I'm walking and I got up, you know, okay, now I can see it. What? I said, yeah. So then we're walking, you know, further on. And he said, 
can you see the, I said, no, I said, you know, uh, Jefferson or something. And then I get up there and it's like, okay, now I can see Jefferson. So I went home and told my parents, I need glasses. And they said, well, if we get you glasses, you're going to have to wear them. And I said, yeah, I'll wear them, you know. So as soon as I got, you know, glasses, you know, went to the eye doctor and had the prescription and had the glasses made, I put them on and I continued to wear them all my life until many years, many years later. And uh, went to, that was in Florida too, so after 2000, went to, uh, uh, you know, went to the eye doctor and he says, you need bifocals, so. He said, do you want the no, you know, you know, no, I said, yeah, you know. The, so they made the glasses that way and I just couldn't, you know. I said, went back and said, okay, give me the, you know, the thing. That didn't, so I just wore the glasses when I, I just wore glasses when I drove. And that was a bitch too, because I guess that's when I, I just said, give me a regular, I mean, forget the, the, you know, but then of course when I was driving, it's fine. But then if I looked down, or, you know, just, I couldn't tell what the, you know, speedometer was on or whatever. That was just, and I just, and I just use glasses to drive. I haven't been driving for years. I don't wear glasses, but my, now my sight is getting worse. So I, uh, gonna have to, I guess I'll have to have some glasses made up, I guess before long. Uh, I can't even blame it on getting old because, you know, 